갑자기 내게 나타나죠 너 난... Transforming an organization is widely recognized as the seminal work in the field of OD or organization development. And no matter how you look at it, the world continues to change faster. So, kailangan nating makahabol kasi maraming changes, there are many changes in the environment and rapid, rapidly happen. And there are two fundamental goals underscoring most transformation. The fundamental goals in transformation is to increase revenue, profits, and at the same time decrease costs to become more effective and efficient. So ito yung mga goals na gusto nating makita to become competitive. Organizational health is the competitive advantage of an organization. And this happened through transformation. And there are eight step process developed by an American consultant, Philip Cutler, who is the father of modern management. Number one, in the eight process is to create a sense of urgency. Top leaders, CEO, must describe an opportunity that will appeal to individual employees using your heads and your heart and this is statement to raise a large urgent group of volunteers we have to convince we have to craft messages that will convince our individual employees to get out of their comfort zone and we have to create a sense of urgency to grab the opportunity there are opportunities that we have to avail so we have to be adapt to we have to adapt to transformational or organizational transformation okay so number one is to create a sense of urgency why do we have to create a sense of urgency how urgent it is to how urgent it is for us to change. Building urgency is all about concentrating on a window of opportunity that is open today and may close tomorrow. Even at these pandemic times, there is opportunity. Such opportunity brings people together, aligning them around a commonality and clarifying where their where energy should be directed. So, we have to bring people together, aligning them around a commonality and clarifying to converge in order to direct the energy. Windows of opportunity are appearing more quickly than ever. Identifying an opportunity quickly and mobilizing urgency around it becoming the key to beating competitors. To beat competitors, we have to create an urgency to grab the appearing opportunity more quickly than ever. And we have to identify an opportunity quickly. So number one is to create a sense of urgency. Number two, build a guiding coalition. Building a guiding coalition in an organization we are dealing with diversified workforce. We are dealing with workers with different cultures, different beliefs, different norms, different ranks, different departments, different exposure, different education. So the guiding coalition is the center nerve of the transformational guide or it is the center nerve of the organizational transformation it can take many shapes but must consist of members from all layers of the hierarchy representing fun different functions and receive information about the organizations at all levels and ranks and synthesize that information into new ways of working okay 
collecting those information and giving them to stakeholders in order to create new ways of working. Without a guiding coalition, the organization continue to rely on traditional hierarchical ways of operating which will not serve it over the long term. The linchpin of your entire transformation is in place. An accountable, diverse group bound by opportunity, strategy, and action. Third, form a strategic vision. Dr. Philip Cutter defines strategic initiatives as targeted and coordinated activities. Forming a strategic vision is has something to do with coordinated activities and executed fast enough and well enough to make our vision a reality. What are the characteristics of a terrific strategic vision? What are the characteristics of a strategic vision? The vision should be communicable, desirable, creates a verbal picture, flexible, strategic vision should also be feasible, imaginable, as well as simple. Your focus in organizational transformation is on actions and initiative, crafted by a diverse set of employees and validated by senior leaders that will advance your opportunity. Fourth, enlist a volunteer army. In organizational transformation, we should have a group of volunteers who will join with us and create their own strategy in order to drive in the same direction. This is large-scale change can only occur when very significant members of employees amass. All employees should converge together under a common opportunity and drive in the same direction. All of us, all employees from top to bottom should be driving in the same direction. One goal, one vision, and one action. In the organization, we have a sizable body of employees who are excited and able to take action on critically important initiatives linked to your business strategy. There are many employees who are excited and can take an action on critically important initiative linked to your business strategy. So all employees should be focusing in one vision and one action aligning to our corporate vision. To build a volunteer army, these are group of people converging as a team and we need to give our people a choice to participate and permission to step up and act. So we are empowering our employees so they will participate and they can start to act based on the given job. The volunteer army <coughs> does not need to involve outsider. So it means to say we don't need external consultant. Uh, this thing is good. We don't need external consultant because we have existing employees who holds the energy, they know the big picture, they know the existence of the company, they know what's happening inside the company, so they themselves should be a part of the organizational transformation without the help of the external consultant. Next is enable action by removing barriers. What are the barriers inside the organization? and why we have to remove those barriers. By removing barriers such as inefficient processes and archaic norms, leaders provide the freedom necessary for employees to work across boundary 
and create real impact. So, employees are empowered and engaged and they are free to work across boundaries in order to create real impact in the organization. So, we have uh, two kinds of organization. Mechanistic, which is it's very hierarchical uh, and you have to follow the given uh, organizational or the command uh, chain of, you have to follow the chain of command, but in organizational transformation, we have to remove those barriers, inefficient processes, okay, this include red tapes, okay, we have tangible evidence of employee innovations stemming from collapse silos and new ways of working together. What are the silos means here? Silos when you are working only in one area and nobody knows what you are doing, no information coming out. That is what they call the silos. This is a huge container wherein you are inside and all information were kept inside. So, we agree that even our own management practices are too bureaucratic and a nuisance. Yet remnants of the past can have tremendous staying power. So, bureaucratic and hierarchical. So, organization is dynamic. So, if we will engage and empower our employees, innovation is less about generating brand new ideas and more about knocking down barriers to making those ideas a reality. So, innovation is generating new ideas and knocking down barriers to make those ideas reality. So, remove barriers so everybody can contribute to the improvement of an organization. And in order to remove barriers, we must identify them. Think about why past initiatives have failed. Why previous organizational transformation has failed? In what stage? What stage it failed? And how they get completed but then abandoned. So, barriers can be commonly stated and accepted statements that while appearing helpful, can deter attempts to get past legacy obstacle. So, we have to remove barriers so everybody can act and show their talent and contribute it to the organization. Actually, sa workplace, may mga matatalino, magagaling na workers kahit sa technical kahit sa conceptual, mayroong magagaling. Pero, hindi sila nabibigyan ng pagkakataon. Many, many potential leaders and many potential contributors to organization kept silent because they were not given the opportunity to act and to contribute. They are not empowered and they are not engaged. So, ito yung takbo ng organization natin. Kahit na sa Pilipinas, sa mga Pilipino. Sa Pilipino, kahit sa abroad, when I was working abroad, maraming magaling na employee, maraming magaling na workers, but they did not show up because they are not empowered, they are not engaged. Para bang yan lang ang trabaho mo, dyan ka lang. So, you have the duties and responsibilities. So, people are being stuck up in one activity based on their job description and duties and responsibilities. They are not empowered, they are not asked, and they are not considered to be a contributor to the organization. So, empowering employees, okay, 
will expose the potential leaders in the organization. So, remove barriers and as we mentioned before, common barriers include silos, silos, container, narrowness in thinking, pressure to hit numbers, complacency, legacy rules or procedures, and limited access to key stakeholders and leaders. Okay. Why people are not empowered or not engaged? Some companies are practicing the so-called open door policy. In open door policy, you have an access to key stakeholders and leaders. You are not being hindered by your superior. Okay, maraming kumpanya sa Pilipinas ang nagpa-practice ng open door policy wherein an employee, a manager can go direct to the CEO. Okay? Maganda ito kasi nalalaman mo yung real situation if the frontliners are the one talking to you. There is no filtering of messages and there is no filtering of the real situation in the workplace environment. Open door policy is a part of organizational transformation wherein workers are not limited to talk with the key stakeholders and leaders. Now, while we're going with organizational transformation, next is let us generate short-term wins. Winning is anything, big or small, it's a progress. And that helps you move toward your opportunity. They may take the shape of actions to take, a lesson learned, a process improved, a new behavior demonstrated. Okay. Yung mga maliliit na improvement, yung mga maliliit na progress, maliliit na success. Generate and celebrate. We have to celebrate. That's why during the transformation, nagkakaroon ng konting kainan, salo-salo. It's uh, just like celebrating. Parang pinakikita natin, nag improve na tayo unti-unti. So, nafe-feel ng mga tao, nag improve na nga tayo kasi nagse-celebrate tayo. First time nilang kumain kasama yung CEO. Okay. When I was working abroad, I encountered similar scenario. Uh, yung vice president ng kumpanya, when I was working in a petrochemical company that is the Saudi petrochemical company in Saudi which is owned by Shell Oil Company USA okay we experience lunching together with the CEO okay per department materials department let's say Monday you will lunch out with CEO dun lang kami kumakain sa kantin malaki yung kantin namin uh, kung ano yung pagkain ng mga Amerikano yun din yung pagkain namin so we lunch together with our big boss so we're happy it is being done per department okay maganda ang transformation sa isang kumpanya ito yung gustong gusto ko pagka nag diagnose ako ng isang kumpanya nakikita ko yung problema makikita mo yung problema kasi you have the benchmark my benchmark is my previous employer my previous employers were Halliburton International, that is the Brown and Root International, and then Shell Oil Company. I hope everybody knows about these companies. Halliburton or Brown and Root International, which is owned by Dick Cheney. So, nakita ko yung mga sistema in terms of productivity, in terms of quality system, in terms of even salary, recruitment system, nakita ko pa paano sila mag-recruit. What I have experienced is different. Nung ni-recruit kami, ang kinukonsider ng kumpanya, hindi experience. Sa Pilipinas, ang kinukonsider ng kumpanya, kailangan may experience ka. In Shell Oil Company, they look for attitude. Ang screening nila, 3 days whole day, puro IQ test. It's not the technical factors that they are looking for. They are looking for potential and potential employees and 
contributors to the company. So they look more on behavior and attitude rather than technical experience. So generate and celebrate short-term wins. Whether small or big, you have to celebrate and consider it as a progress. So we have to collect data and a body of data that tells the story of your transformation is validated, quantifiable, and qualifiable terms. These wins and their celebration can carry great psychological power and play a crucial role. They give credibility to the new structure. So, ibig sabihin, if we celebrate short-term wins, napipil ng mga tao, may psychological effect ito na napipil nila ba okay na, nagwo-work pala yung ginagawa natin. Ibig sabihin, yung effort ng mga tao, nagkakaroon na ng resultang maganda. They give credibility to the new structure. So, doon nila sasabihin na okay pala tong ginagawa natin na organizational transformation, nakikita natin yung improvement. Kasi nga, sineselebrate ng management kasama tayo. And this credibility in turns promotes more and more cooperation within the organization. To transform an organization, our number one problem is culture. Culture belongs to people and people, they have different behavior and different norms, different beliefs, different values. Ito yung mahirap. Because we're not talking to robots, we're talking to human resources. We're talking to people. We're not talking to machine. So, what motivates people to join and to participate in organizational transformation? Usually, employees, they do not want disruption. Why rock the boat? There's no problem. So, don't rock the boat. We are smoothly sailing. And then, next is sustain acceleration. How shall we sustain acceleration? That the improvement that we have started, para bang sinabi mo, in the scale of 1 to 10, nando na tayo sa number 8. So, we have to sustain that and accelerate to 9 and 10. So, acceleration, we have to press harder after the first successes. First success, Accelerate second, third, fourth, fifth, up to you reach the top or the corporate goal. Press harder after the first successes and succeeding progress. Our increasing credibility can improve systems, structures, and policies. So, dapat ma-convince natin ang mga employees to get out of their comfort zone at makita nila yung credibility natin na nag improve ang system at nagkakaroon ng benefits. So, increase our credibility and that will improve the systems, the structures, and policies. So, sustain acceleration. And be relentless with initiating change after change until the vision is a reality. Be relentless. Huwag tayong hihinto na magkaroon ng initial changes after changes until yung vision natin to go to the top becomes a reality. So, unti-unti, it can be easy to lift your foot of the gas pedal after experiencing some successes. Sustaining acceleration is the time to press harder and use those wins as momentum to further fuel the change. So, yung progress natin, isustain natin hanggang ma-reach natin yung top. Success after success after success. Change 1, change 2, change 3, up to change 10. These are the progress that we have to achieve. This is the time to press harder 
and use those progress and successes as momentum to further fuel the change. O, so, yung momentum, tuloy-tuloy yun, press harder. Yung mga maliliit na progress, we have to press harder. Pag pinagsama-sama natin yan, yun yung momentum that will fuel the change. If urgency drops sufficiently and momentum is lost, dapat wag mawala yung momentum. Dapat yung urgency laging nasa isip natin at isustain yung acceleration. Sustain the small progress and successes. Ito yung mga short and big wins or big progress or small progress. Okay, we have to maintain and press harder to go up. How can we sustain progress acceleration? Okay, we can sustain acceleration if we can get more and more people or employees involved in this organizational transformation. Always look for ways to expand the volunteer army. Ibig sabihin, per department, mayroong team. Dapat dumadami yung team members at dumadami yung sumasali sa team. That everybody will participate with new volunteers and fresh eyes. Uh, sa ibang company, like the case of Total Quality Management introduced in GE, uh, GE and Samsung. Okay. So, they encourage people, employees, individual employees to join the work teams. The more you convince more members to join the team for organizational transformation, the better that we can <coughs> minimize barriers and resistance to change. And we'll be getting a lot of potential great contributors to organization. So, sustain the acceleration of change. Institute change. Years of different kind of experience are often needed to create lasting change. This is why cultural change comes to one's a deep transformation, not at the beginning. You first have to build the muscle and track record of antithetical experiences. Culture changes after you have successfully altered people's action connecting the dots between new behaviors and better performance. So, culture changes for organizational transformation, altering or modifying people's action and changing their behavior for better performance. Nan amu mai do hal suga opsa chi.